Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Waterboro. I know that we are here now on March 21st, 2018. We are now six days out from the vote right here, as you see on the screen. This here, the special election. Now, why I want to do this video today is because I have allowed the town officials to have their two meetings. Uh, the first meeting last week, you had a couple people involved that showed up from the public and they had great concerns about the property because they live right beside it. But why I'm doing this video today is because I, I was very disgusted once again with how our Board of Selectmen treat the citizens of Waterboro. How they talk down to you, how they claim that the, the people of Waterboro care, but there's just a handful of misinformers and liars, you know, to the two people that wrote the letter in the Waterboro Reporter last week, Gordon Littlefield just openly insulted you, not by name, but he openly insulted you saying you were a liar and says that you're misinforming. And of course, social media, that's me. I'm lying to you people. I, And this is how he goes on. But ladies and gentlemen, who's the one sitting here, as you see right here, with proof of what I'm saying? proving through documents and their own words. So I think the first thing I want to do here in this video is let's listen to our great selectman, Gordon Littlefield, insulting the people. And then we'll talk about his words after. So here, let's listen to this here. So let's see what he has to say. I'd like to clear up, there's been uh, quite a lot of... Uh... I think misinformation that's been spread in, in the social media that needs to be addressed and, and even in some of the letters to the editor. Uh, so if you have questions on that, I, I strongly urge you to, you know, call, you know, into the town administrator's office or anyone on the board, you know, can certainly help you out. Um, you know, one, one of the comments I know in the back of my mind was uh, somebody wrote in a letter to the editor that they want the people to send a clear message to the selectmen on uh, you know how they want you know which way they want the town to go and I submit that on that that I, I think that we got a pretty good a clear message from the townspeople when they voted on it at town meeting uh, to accept the 2020 comprehensive plan and uh, you know we're following you know that now by following through on you know the recommendations of that plan and I thought that was a pretty strong message uh, so to say that we're you know we're not listening to the people I think is uh, you know false all right okay that's that's all I'm gonna put you guys through with this uh, one thing right here, Gordon Littlefield, first and foremost, you need to understand Gordon Littlefield. Gordon Littlefield was somebody that did not want to be a productive part of society, and he became a public servant. He worked for the York County Sheriff's Department. He retired from the York County Sheriff's Department. So what people like him know is that they put themselves above the taxpayers. They feel like they're better than the taxpayers. He has not been able to, or I can't say him, they have not been able to get their point across to the people because, yes, people like me, people like others on their Facebook. See, I'm not on Twitter and Facebook. I have nothing to do with those spyware people that take your personal information and give it to these people and others and government agencies, but I digress on that. And then to openly call out 
the people who finally the Waterboro reporter decided to post a, a couple letters and not just feed these people with the narrative that they want to push. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Littlefield, in my opinion, is a coward. He cannot come out and say what the misinformation is, but he wants you to go behind closed doors so they can only give you half truths. And they can put a nice pretty bow on top and they can sugarcoat it and they can sucker you in to only listening to these people. Well, as we see in our government, our federal government, our state government, our county government, our town governments, do they ever have your best interest at heart? Earlier in this, they openly admitted, ladies and gentlemen, Gary Lamb claimed to have two million dollars excess and a thousand and a million dollar crisis fund. But the truth is a three million dollar surplus and well over a one million dollar crisis. So they're automatically they're even now they're lying to you, see? They're lying to you about the amounts so they did put on the screen but still in writing what you see from Gary Lamb is two million and one million about well a, an extra million dollar surplus ladies and gentlemen if you take the three million dollar surplus and you divide it down by the number of properties in Waterboro Everybody in Waterboro deserves a $652 check cut to them right here, right now, and say sorry for overtaxing you. Because I don't care what any government official says. I'm not lying to you. Gordon Littlefield is trying to blow smoke up your ear. Oh yes he is. He only wants the half-truth. That is the modern-day Nazi Marxism. You silence any opposition as we see the censoring going on on the social media and stuff today because of people like Gordon Littlefield that want to lie to the people. And I call a half-truth a lie. If you cannot show the pros and cons and be honest to the people, Gordon, then we will have to call you out. That letter was very well written. We need to show and send a message to the town. Well, the thing is, Gordon, is why don't you tell the truth to the people about the votes? Number one, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is all they put on. 21.96% of every dollar goes to the town. 3.91% goes to the county. 74.12% of every dollar they take from you in your property tax goes to the school. And we'll talk about that in a later video. About how it's time to shut down this runaway money train that's not educating our children. Gives us people like Gordon Littlefield is what it does. So, you know, I will say to you right now, Mr. Littlefield, how am I lying? Be a man and let's hear it. I'm being open and straightforward to the people. I'm not hiding behind a closed door to lie to people and only tell them what I want them to know. So let's hear it, Mr. Littlefield. Let's hear how I am lying to the people. Because if you want to really look at it, when you come into, this is their website. You go down here to News and Archives. And that brings up this. This is all the news and the archives. The thing is, as you can see, right here, election results. And you come up further, election results, right here. Now, when you come down here into 2015 area, it seems, oh, gee, we have no election results. 
especially around June, right in here. Where did all the election results go from in here? And we did have elections like we do every every year. In here, the election results of when the 2020 committee, when we brought it forth to the townspeople, many of us wanted to have a different platform. We wanted to be able to get as many things going as one so the people understood exactly what the 2020 comprehensive plan was truly about. But we were not allowed to do that. Because, of course, the people like Tim Neal that came on in the end and this Robert Powers, as you see, his name is all over. All the documents is always the mediator. Now, what happened is it was put forth in a babbling bull way that the people didn't understand that this is not something that is set in stone. This is something we have to work on. So in a way, the selectmen are telling the truth. There is something that it's recommendations that we have to work on. But now the problem is it's how they are interpreting it. But back here in the elections, the people had no idea what it truly was. And the townspeople were not, or the people involved in putting it forth to the people, were not being straightforward and open about everything because that's not how their political training is. They do not care about the truth. All they care about is how they present their stuff to the people to get the people to jump on board with their agenda. That's Marxism with fascism and all the isms put together. It is the government over the people. It's not a government of the people. Gordon Littlefield, why don't you tell us what the true results were? Because I remember them. When they claim, ladies and gentlemen, see in here, here were some, here were some election results of an off season this was 6 14 of 2016 it's your primary so you had your primaries now you come down in here now you look here's your 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 municipal voting and what you have here as you see waterboro has about 4,800 registered voters. And as you can see right here, just in 2016, in June, we only had 598 people. 11% gave us Dennis Abbott and Tim Neal. And of course, here's the school budget goes the school budget goes through. For this it was not the budget. This here was the terms. See, there was people they were hiring for committees and this and that. This is your school budget. As you see. Question one, question two. This was the year they wanted to know if they could still if they could if they still wanted us to vote yes or no. But as you see, when you have, you know, they're not winning by much. A hundred votes. Over here to keep it in the hands of the voters, a little bit more voted yes. But the thing is see how these five hundred and ninety eight people are running the town. They're the ones that control the town. We don't. And it is hard to get people to vote because of how Gordon Littlefield, you just heard how Gordon Littlefield insults the people and then cuts you down behind closed doors because he's not man enough to stand up and do it on camera in front of everybody and point out how you're lying to him. The vote for to accept the 2020 committee was no different than this stuff right here. We almost lost it 
because there was only 40 more yes votes than no votes. And it was only about 500 people that had voted. But they say that's the voice of the people. No, it's not. It's because of the way they insult people and they talk down to people and they they treat you like you're nothing but a peasant. That's the problem. This Malone property, ladies and gentlemen, this, this whole thing is not good. It, it's nothing good at all. This Malone property right here, this is not the property that we wanted big development on. We did say some commercial development could go on in this area because, but the problem is any developer that comes in, in this section right here, ladies and gentlemen, that you will see, if you look at Google Map, when a developer comes in to look at a site to build anything, one thing that they're going to do is they look at the topographical map and they will see that this is about a 15-16% incline. That's a hill going upward. That's quite an incline. They won't even look at a site usually that has over a 10% incline because it costs way too much money to develop the area because it's so steep. What we did do, the other property that's in on this is right up in here. This is Foglio's Pit. This is the Townhouse Road. This is Little Ospie Lake. This is a trailer park area that comes in. And, and you want to know how these people think about something in their backyard? Why don't you ask these people about how they've been complaining and lied to? When they have proof that Foglio's over here on a Saturday morning claiming I won't start until 8, but he's over here 6.30, 7 o'clock, starting up his machinery, moving machinery around. So these people on a Saturday morning are up at 7 o'clock because, oh yeah, here's your little buffer zone. Here's your little 15, 20, 30 foot buffer zone between here and here. But we said, look. Get your hands on this property. It's flat. It's not in a big swampy area. It's not on a hill. And there's plenty of property here to create. Even when you come down in here, here's Route 5. You come in. And you have a development in here. With homes. Further away. And you come in here and you get your hands on this property. And you develop commercial in here. It's not much of a difference than right down here. But ladies and gentlemen, they keep cramming everything right here. This is all swamp. It's all swamp land. It's all big hills, mountains. You come further over in here. This is all swamp land. And they keep, you know... I mean, the old saying of, if you believe that, I have some swamp land in Florida to sell you. The only difference between down in, in here and over in here and over in here where they keep trying to cram everything is that this is the only high ground. The rest of this is all swamp. It's swamp. It's marshland. It's wet. That's the same problem they had they had over here with the health clinic from building. It's just all swamp. And there's regulations against it. So they're not telling you the truth. We did say some form of commercial and we definitely did not say the town should be getting into real estate business. You know, that's the problem. They like to tell you that that's what we said because the misinformation that they put out to you, the half-truths that they put out to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I still, we need to, yes, hold this town accountable and say enough is enough. And if Gordon Littlefield wants to sit there and insult us, 
openly on the air without proving his statement, then maybe it's time for Gordon Littlefield to go. Maybe it's time to get rid of Gordon Littlefield so we won't keep picking up their personal private roads that are now town roads that we are now paying for when they won't even shut the heavy traffic off in the old Alfred Road that has two schools and a public park that is nothing but a tractor-trailer superhighway that they continue to waste thousand, a few thousand dollars or so a year on throwing a bunch of patch that when they plow winds up on the side of the road and becomes missiles for tires. Enough of the ignorance is enough, Gordon. Be a man. Let's hear it. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. All, lead, all roads do not lead to Rome. And we are sick and tired of people like you rendering unto Caesar that which is ours. We are not here to support the whims of people like you. And Tim, be a man. Tell the truth. Stop being a kiss-ass. You guys got a problem with what I say? Let's hear it. Beating around the bush is nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. I will fight you at every turn of how you have pulled the wool over the people's eyes. You gave us a town administrator with the powers of a town manager and it was all on a lie. All on a lie. Just like the comprehensive plan now, all you're bringing forth is a bunch of lies about what the true intention was. Because basically you don't care, you don't know, and you think that you're untouchable. We are awake. We are now holding state, local, county, and federal governments accountable for their corruption their tyranny, and their oppression of the American people. Google, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they can all censor all they want, but we have our means of getting it out. And we don't care if the local newspaper is just a shill for the local government. It's the reason it's nothing but a worthless newspaper that nobody really reads. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you again, and I will encourage you, hold this town accountable for their lies and their half-truths and their misdirection and their overtaxing and their, and their supporting of an entity that we do not own and the constant whims of putting the taxpayers on the hook for a fire department that is mostly made up of people that do not even live in this town. It's time we have the say in our town. So vote no. Vote no. Vote no. On March 27th. And hold this town office accountable for their lies, their deceptions, and their deceit. And I will be here all the time to set the record straight. So thank you very much. And as always, this is no way out. <laughs>